My name is Selena, and I am an alcoholic. I was introduced to Alcoholics Anonymous in April of 1984 because I had thoughts about committing suicide. This caused me to speak with a psychologist in the Employees Assistance Program who recommended that I attend an outpatient Alcoholics Anonymous program. I lied my way through that program for about two months, which led me into an inpatient program. This facility was plush. It was a refurbished antebellum home on the beach with a choice of everything from meals, drinks, and snacks three times a day. We had double rooms with a shower in each room. In 1984, it cost about $5,500 per month. Those were the amenities. However, I could not accept the fact that I was an alcoholic because I didn't have a problem with drinking. I could drink just fine at the time. I thought because I couldn't have a child that this is what was causing all of my maladjustments in every other area of my life. I just needed to learn how to cope with that, except that fact, if you will. Then everything would be just fine. The good people at this facility, however, suggested that if I just stopped drinking and drugging, I could deal with the infertility problem unenlightened person that I was, I got wrapped up in the fact that I didn't have a drinking problem. They told me that if I had a problem with one thing, that I would have a problem with another. They say, you can't hear until you can hear. So once I left that facility cured, so I thought, within 10 days, I was off to the races. I spent a total of nine years attempting to prove them wrong, only to prove them right. I lost everything. What I didn't lose, I gave away. Relationships, home, jewelry, and had to suffer through what the book terms the pitiful and incomprehensible demoralization of myself, resulting in the loss of my own self-respect. During those nine years, I went through infertility treatment and conceived a son. I also was able to have a second son during my second year of sobriety. But it was after delivering my first son that I knew for a fact that, yes, I am an alcoholic. I couldn't stop drinking for nine months, or I could stop drinking for nine months, but after that, I lost all control. No amount of praying or remorse could cure my alcoholism. I tried all the methods listed in the big book and then some ad nauseum. I suffered for four more years until I could no longer hold a three-day-a-week job. Two weeks before my sobriety date, I had given a guy my last $10 to go along with the 40 ounce of beer I had in the refrigerator. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning. My son was asleep in his room. The guy had not returned. So I asked my cousin to go with me to find out what happened. We went down there. My cousin couldn't find him, so we left. On my way back home, a voice asked, what would you have done if you had found him? Because you see, I had taken a knife with me. Then the voice continued, either he would be dead and you'd be in jail, or you'd be dead. Either way, you would not be with that child you claim you love so much. So the next day, I asked my mother-in-law to take me to a treatment center up in Pascagoula, Mississippi, the Stevens Center. She took me up there. They said it was going to cost $200. We didn't have a choice of food. In fact, the food was sent over from the jailhouse. We had community showers. This is where the disease of alcoholism had brought me. I didn't have $200, so my dad had to wire it. They weren't going to have a bed for another two weeks. It was the longest two weeks of my life. So the night before I was to check in, I turned up for life all by myself. This was going to be my last time for everything. So the next day, my mother-in-law, she drives me up there for the intake. Everything's going well. They ask me, have I drank or drug within the last 24 hours? Of course, I said yes, because I needed to be honest. After all, I'm changing my life. But they said I had to come back the next day. So I began counting my date of recovery on Wednesday, November 2nd, 1994. 
And November 2nd, 1994, I did something that I didn't do the other two times. I opened the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I read the preface, the three forwards, and then I read the doctor's opinion. I found out that I have a disease. I also found out that I have an allergy and I'm allergic to alcohol, the same way that some people are allergic to peanut butter. Like people who have allergies, I have to leave the drink and any other chemical or mood-altering substance alone. I also learned that this disease can go into remission. I can keep it in remission by taking my medicine. That medicine is finding the sponsor. I still have the same one. Working the 12 steps, which I do every year. Finding a home grouping. Reading the first 164 pages of the big book every year. Reading and meditating on the daily reflections. Going to meetings and helping other alcoholics remain sober. After over 23 years of sobriety, I can honestly say that I live with an attitude of gratitude. I am grateful to be able to have lived two lives within one lifetime, putting into practice on a daily basis all that the program of Alcoholics Anonymous and a loving God has seen fit with which to bless me. Thank you for letting me share.